Tony? All right, thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. And thank you to all of you at home. Appreciate uh, you joining us here tonight for the Township Council regular meeting for January 18th, 2022. This is a regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Montclair and, and is being, uh, being broadcast live on Channel 34 and is streaming live on the Montclair TV 34 YouTube channel. It is available on demand and can and will be rebroadcast. This meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. This meeting was included in the annual notice of the meeting schedule as set forth in Resolution R21 210 adopted by the council at his conference meeting on November 15th, 2021, advertised in the official newspaper on December 30th, 2021, and January 6th, 2022, posted on the bulletin boards outside of the municipal building and has remained continuously posted. In addition, a copy of this revised annual notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the township clerk. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the, black, to the United States, States of America, Republic. to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, roll call, please. Councilor Cummings? Present. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Present. Councilor Price Abrams? Present. Councilor Russo? Present. Councilor Schlager? Here. Councilor Yacovellis? Present. Mayor Spiller? Present. Thank you. Uh, I'll move the agenda with flexibility without objection. Next, I'd like to move to the approval of minutes. There have been presented to the Council the minutes of July 13th, 2021, and July 20th, 2021. Are there any uh, corrections or modifications? Seeing none, hearing none, I so move. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. Next, we have a proclamation. Councilman Cummings, would you do the honor, please, sir? Mayor, thank you for this opportunity. I spoke last time about Mr. Finney, so I think enough people have heard that. But again, a great man, great person in the township, and I'm proud to be able to read this proclamation from the township in memorandum of Howard Finney. Where is the mayor and council of the township of Montclair are saddened by the recent passing of Howard Finney III, a longtime Montclair resident, Marine, and coach of the Montclair Cobras Junior Football Program. And whereas Mr. Finney attended Montclair Public Schools before graduating in 1949 at Phillips Academy and Andover. He played varsity football, basketball, and baseball despite significant hearing loss as a child. During his time at Harvard University, Mr. Finney continued to excel athletically and was most noted for being a pitcher on the varsity baseball team and tailback on the varsity football team. And whereas, while attending Harvard University, Mr. Finney volunteered for the United States Marine Corps and spent the next three summers in Quantico, Virginia to prepare for officer training school. After graduating from Harvard University in 1953, Mr. Finney spent the next few years stationed in various locations playing touch football on Sundays. And whereas, after being honorably disbarged as first lieutenant, Mr. Finney moved back to Montclair. He started the Montclair Jun Cobras Junior Football Program in 1969, where he dedicated the next 44, 41 years to coaching over 3,000 players and winning over 400 games. And whereas, through Mr. Finney's coaching methods and strategies, he helped and inspired many athletes to play football on, on collegiate level to a professional level in semi-pro teams and the NFL. Players such as Dwight Jones, Dwight Sean Jones, Max Jones, David Tyree, Quintus McDonald, and Alvin Bowen are, are some of the players he coached. And whereas, Mr. Finney received various awards and honors for his athletic abilities and community contributions. He was the first recipient to receive the William Payne LaCroix Memorial Award as a junior varsity member at Harvard University for enthusiasm, sportsmanship, loyalty, and team spirit. He was also awarded the Mercier Club Sportsman of the Year Award of Northern New Jersey for his dedication to youth sports and community involvement. And whereas Mr. Finney was honored by the Township Council in May 1992 for his, for his dedication to the Montclair Cobras Junior Football Program, and on October 16, 
the Township Council renamed the northern section of Edgemont Park, known as the Metal Field, to Howard Finney III Field to recognize his years of service to the Montclair community. And whereas the legacy of Mr. Finney is immeasurable, he instilled values of discipline, teamwork, and leadership in all the young athletes he coached. It is through his passion, dedication, and commitment that so many young people of Montclair succeeded on and off the field. Now, therefore, the mayor and council of the Township of Montclair hereby recognize the remarkable contributions of Howard Finney III over the course of his career, express the thanks of a, of a grateful community for the life and service of Coach Finney, and extends its sympathy to his many family members and friends who will cherish his memory. And I so move. And second, seconded. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Councilman, for reading that. And certainly, um, I think as you as you noted, uh, certainly last last meeting and and in, in the uh, proclamation tonight, uh, certainly um, captured. I, I think just the impact uh, that he had. So thank you, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, moving forward um, with the agenda here, flexibility. I would like to move back to the uh, state of the township address, um, and uh, as it did last year, to everybody. Uh, just begin and uh, with with an update on where we are. So uh, to my fellow Montclair residents, it is my great privilege to speak to you this evening on the state of our township. For nearly two years, our community, our nation, and indeed the entire world have been faced with a public health crisis of a scope and severity previously unseen in our lifetimes. When I gave this address one year ago as vaccine distribution was just beginning in earnest, it was my sincere hope that the coronavirus pandemic was coming to an end. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. Wave after wave of this insidious virus has stretched our healthcare system, our economy, and our patients to the brink. Now, once again, we are forced to make difficult but necessary sacrifices to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our community. The coronavirus pandemic has left no corner of our society untouched, and Montclair is no exception. Nearly every aspect of our daily lives has been impacted. The toll of this virus can be measured in small businesses forced to close. It can be measured in birthdays that have been missed, in months spent apart from classmates, colleagues, and loved ones. And sadly, it can be measured in lives lost. As we know, more than 800,000 of our fellow Americans have lost their lives to the coronavirus, including at least 78 Montclair residents. We together mourn their loss. But the pandemic has also been measured by our resilience and the resilience of our spirit. Throughout this ongoing crisis, Montclair has answered the call to serve. Our local nonprofit organizations have kicked into high gear, providing more help than ever before. Our local houses of worship have extended their hands and opened their doors. Our small businesses pivoted to meet the needs of our community. As a government, we've been laser focused on bringing all the available resources to bear to address the enormity of this unprecedented challenge. One of my first acts as mayor was to convene a specialized task force to focus on our COVID-19 response efforts. The task force has borne significant results for our township, including the development of a recently published directory of local nonprofit organizations, and they were instrumental in efforts towards securing grants, including helping to secure a more than $600,000 grant to support the work of Tony's Kitchen. The task force has also worked hard to address the impact COVID-19 has had on our small businesses. From the beginning, we've worked to support our small businesses, including providing direct municipal grants to Montclair small businesses, and by lobbying the state to modify outdoor dining rules. We funded and ran a shop local campaign, held town hall meetings on small business grants from the state and federal government with representatives to help guide our local businesses. We waived outside permit and parking fees and more. We are committed to continuing to work with our small businesses and our entire community to come out of this stronger on the other side. The work of the COVID-19 task force continues unabated. and I'm thankful and want to personally thank them right here tonight for the great work that they have volunteered their time to do. Residents who have been willing to serve us all. In December, as the Omicron variant began to circulate, my colleagues on the council and I made the unanimous decision to reinstate an indoor mask mandate in the township. It is not a decision we made lightly, but faced with this highly contagious variant, this council was duty bound to act. I'm confident this measure will mitigate the spread of the virus and protect our community. And that is how we've governed since the start of this pandemic 
and how all of Montclair has responded with a steadfast resolve to take care of one another. That's who we are as a community. Drawing from a deep well of generosity and genuine concern for the well-being of our neighbors, our local nonprofits, small businesses, houses of worship, private citizens have each in their own way demonstrated the very best of what Montclair is all about. Despite facing a challenge of unprecedented proportions, the state of our township remains strong. Montclair has never been dispirited by the challenges over the last two years. Adversity has strengthened our resolve and our commitment to meet the needs of our resident. One of those needs is a sustainable solution to the skyrocketing cost of renting an apartment in our township. Affordability is a challenge Montclair has struggled with for some time. It's no secret that our community is a desirable and sought after place to live. Our historic homes, vibrant downtown, flourishing art scene, and world-class public schools have driven housing costs to all-time highs. Increasing home values have been a hard-earned dividend to the investment many have made to live here. But we know that Montclair's worth is derived by more than just the price of our housing stock. Left unfettered, rising rents threaten to diminish the very diversity that makes Montclair such a special place to live, work, and raise a family. I firmly believe that reasonable, common sense rent control measures are critical to the sustainability of our community. That's why, alongside dedicated residents, members of the Tenants Association of Montclair, and my council colleagues, I was proud to help lead the effort to pass the very first rent control ordinance in Montclair's history. Our victory for residents was put on hold as an enactment of the rent control ordinance has been delayed by protracted litigation. Despite this delay, I am undeterred in my commitment to this critical issue. I remain engaged in ongoing dialogue with all parties, and I will continue to be a strong advocate for common sense rent regulations until residents can rest assured that they will continue to be able to call Montclair their home. One of the pieces that makes Montclair so special is our downtown. Among New Jersey suburbs, Montclair's vibrant downtown stands out as a true gem. Making sure that our downtown remains the envy of the surrounding communities requires thoughtful stewardship and bold vision. This year, we saw two such examples, one newly opened and another newly announced. The recently opened Wellmont Arts Center and Plaza will serve as an anchor for our downtown. Centered around an open air pedestrian plaza, the Wellmont Arts Center will energize our art scene, provide a central location for community gatherings, fortify Montclair's reputation as the cultural hub of Northern New Jersey. New Jersey. <clears throat> it has already been a welcome addition to our community and will continue to enrich our township for years to come. Being part of guiding this project from the very first drawings to the final brick being placed is wonderful to see how it is already living up to the great potential we always envisioned. Another project that is just taking shape is the Essex Hudson Greenway. Recently approved by the state of New Jersey, the Greenway is a culmination of nearly a decade of advocacy by the New Jersey Bike and Walk Coalition. The Essex Hudson Greenway will connect Montclair with Jersey City and communities to our east along a repurposed rail line that will be transformed into a miles long park walkway and bike path. This innovative repurposing will provide economic and environmental benefits to enable further improvements along its route. And positive environmental change is important. As we know, the pandemic is not the only global crisis to hit home this year. Failure to take meaningful action to curb climate change has resulted and an increase in the occurrence of extreme weather events. In September, remnants of Hurricane Ida inundated our township with torrential downpours resulting in catastrophic flooding throughout our township. The damage caused by the flooding was truly devastating. For residents in some parts of our town, the situation they're experiencing is far too often and with greater severity than they've been used to. One such location, Burnside Street, has been particularly impacted. Located off Watchung Ave, Burnside has been plagued with chronic flooding for years, but without any clear or effective solutions. After once again experiencing flooding and with a frustrating lack of progress in finding a remedy, I wrote to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, seeking federal assistance to provide flood mitigation and relief for residents. The USAC was quick to respond, and along with myself, Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill, our local engineering team, and my council colleagues, a team from the Army Corps was able to survey the affected area and will be submitting recommendations and potential solutions. I thank Congresswoman Cheryl for her assistance on this critical issue impacting our township. And certainly it's an example of how fortunate Montclair is to have partners in the federal government that we can count on. 
That federal partnership is also important as we press the federal government for more financial assistance during these challenging times. Certainly, like all aspects of life, our municipal finances have not been immune to the impacts of the pandemic either. During my administration and under the Jackson administration previously, we've taken steps to significantly reduce our municipal debt in Montclair while simultaneously raising our bond rating and making critical investments in infrastructure. These steps, reducing our debt by tens of millions of dollars, improving our bond rating to AAA, and making key investments have put Montclair on solid financial footing to weather this challenging period. Despite our strong financial position, coming into this pandemic, the reality is that now our township is still facing some difficult choices in the near term. This year's budget will again present unique challenges. Montclair's revenues continue to slowly rebound, but will likely fall far short of where we would expect during a normal year. Despite facing this last year and yet again this year, we've been able to deliver budgets that still support so many of the wonderful programs, activities, and services we all enjoy in Montclair, while minimizing any local tax increases. We are asking all departments to look carefully at the budget to continue to find efficiencies while providing the level of quality of services that we want to see. It won't be an easy process this year, but I'm confident that working with our municipal staff, the council, and you, our residents, will develop a budget that works for all of us. Financial sustainability is certainly a key to preserving the things that Mon make Montclair so special. Through our financial management and efforts around, around controlling rents, we've been able to preserve our diversity. It is important because we know that Montclair is a community that values people of all backgrounds. Our commitment to diversity and equality make us an example community throughout the country. It also makes us a target for those who do not share our values. During this past year, like in so many places throughout our country, we've seen a disturbing trend of hate groups targeting our community. We've seen a white supremacist organization target our township by affixing propaganda stickers throughout Montclair as a way to recruit more members. This neo-fascist anti-Semitic organization described by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a neo-Nazi group tries to spread their hateful views, even in Montclair. But they're the antithesis of everything for which we stand. And I wanna be clear, Montclair will not be intimidated. In addition to pursuing this issue with the relevant state and federal law enforcement agencies to help us fight back, Montclair has been awarded a $300,000 grant by the Department of Justice to establish an anti-hate crime, uh, anti-hate community task force. As mayor, you have my commitment to always stand up for our values and to always stand up to anyone who would seek to undermine them. As special as we are as a community, we also acknowledge that there is always more that we can do to combat hate, and together we will do so. And finally tonight, I want to take a moment to address the role that Montclair plays as a leader for other communities to follow. Around the country, we've seen faith in our institutions and in the very support for public service erode. We've seen the peaceful transfer of power threatened. The very survival of self-governance is in question. We have an opportunity in Montclair to prove that self-governance is sustainable. It may not seem to some that one town or one person can make a difference, but each of us matters. We have a chance to show that while we question vociferously on one hand, we also respect the institutions and processes of democracy. Our well-informed residents have never shied away from voicing their opinions. Lively public discourse is as much a part of the fabric of our town as the Montclair Art Museum or Mounting Football. It's part of what I love about our community. But here in Montclair, we have a responsibility, not just to one another, but also the state and quite possibly the nation, to show what progressive government is capable of when we work together. Our township is too important, the ideals for which it stands too precious to squander. As much as we value diversity, we must also honor compassion, understanding, forgiveness, and tolerance. In this stressful time, an unforgiving time, and with the backdrop of a nation whose democracy is in jeopardy, it is easy to be consumed by infighting over differences rather than uniting for common purpose. While that national discourse can seem hopelessly cynical and divisive, Montclair does shine. We shine a beacon for what is possible when people from all backgrounds come together for greater good. If we can find a way to work together and focus on solutions, municipalities throughout the state will take notice and maybe those beyond New Jersey. 
we descend into division and personal attacks, that too will set an example. Leadership isn't about just taking the loudest or listening to just those who speak uh, their minds uh, in, in full force. It's just, it's just all too often easy to take positions because they're popular. It also isn't about looking for things to take credit on. Our challenges here in this moment are too significant. Our moment is too precarious. Leadership is about making difficult decisions, often in uncharted waters, and helping to guide us all to a better place. We do that together with a unified spirit grounded in our shared values. And I know that when we do that, there is nothing, nothing that Montclair can achieve. So to each and every one of you, I say thank you for being such an important part of our community. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America and the Township of Montclair. Thank you. I thank my, my colleagues as well. With that, I'd like to move forward with our agenda, again, with flexibility, and move to our resolution items. I know we've got some litigation that we want to talk about in executive session, but I know there's some people waiting uh, for at least one of our resolutions tonight, and I'd like to move to that. Um, so move through that for those who are, who are waiting. So with that, I'd like to move resolution R2210, which is a resolution authorizing the purchase contracts with certain approved county and New Jersey state cooperative contract vendors. I so move. Second. So moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? Madam Clerk? Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution R2211, which is awarding the contract for HVAC maintenance and, and, and repair services. And I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller. Yes. Next, I'll move to resolution R2213, which is a resolution to extend the mask mandate for indoor public spaces in Montclair. And I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Question, concerns, comments? Seeing uh, Councilman Yacobelis. Thanks, Mayor. I'll just comment. I just want to highlight the two uh, additional exemptions that we're including on this extension. So one is for a person participating in an indoor athletic activity where a six foot distance is not achievable, but a mask is inhibitory to the activity. Um, so that's to clear up any confusion with regard to indoor sports and recreational programs. And the second is performers at indoor live events such as theater, opera, symphony, and choirs may remove masks while actively performing or practicing, though such individuals should maximize physical distancing as much as practic practicable. Uh, and these are in line, uh, as we discussed with the New Jersey Department of Health regulations. And I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Mayor Herlock uh, and you, Mayor, uh, for working with me on the specific language and to our law department as well. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to add that I think uh, Michelle Camarada and her team deserves some kudos here as well because they had to cancel several recreation activities because this ordinance prevented some of the recreation programs that they had so this opens that back up so that the kids and i think it's an example of when we do move resolutions we should really engage staff to identify if there's some loopholes that we're not thinking about and so i'm glad we were able to get to this and hopefully the kids who are were impacted by this will be able to have their games rescheduled down the future. I just wanted to add, Mr. Mayor, if I could real quickly, I just wanted to thank uh, Mr. Yacobellis. Uh, we worked on this together, as he indicated, and I appreciate him taking the lead on this one. Thank you, Mr. Yacobellis. Mr. Deputy Mayor, Councilwoman Price Abrams, I saw your hand. Thanks, Mayor. So, um, you know, I, I, of course, support this as well. And I, I just want to remind our local businesses and such that 
even if they aren't an exempt space, you know, they can consider other mechanisms that they believe works for their business in terms of whether they want to ask for evidence of a vaccination or, um, you know, even in certain instances, maybe the use of a rapid test before coming into a space. I mean, these are just things still available. We're not mandating them at this time, but, you know, we want to consider the safety. Omicron is so um, transmissible and uh, we, we all hope and pray that we're about to hit that fall off point. But, um, you know, this is a, a, a solid next step in terms of continuing it and, and recognizing the impact on certain groups, but wanting to have folks continue to think about all the ways to keep the community safe while we try and engage. Thank Absolutely. you. Mayor Robin. Uh, Councilman Schlager. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Well, as a person who is, not, not to say too personal, but for a person who's literally laying in bed right now, attending this meeting, I can um, attest that although I've been so diligent and so careful, um, I still managed to come down with COVID and it's been almost a week now and um, you can't be too careful. So this mask mandate um, is we, we all have to do as best we can to adhere to it. Um, the, the masks are really important, double masks or the N95 masks are particularly important. I was glad to see today that um, our schools were getting N95 masks delivered to their staff, which is which is really great. So I um I wholeheartedly support this and thank uh, Mr. Yakubelis and Mr. Herlock for doing this and moving it forward. So please, everybody, be careful and um, and get your vaccines, which I have as well. But but um but I'm I'm, I'm going to get there. So thank you. Well, certainly a good spot for us all to note, uh, Councilwoman, that we're certainly wishing you well and, and a speedy recovery. Um, I know I said that on behalf of all of us and, and the community and, and know that you're absolutely right, right? You do all the things we can. It's just to provide, this is another yet another tool. Um, but as you noted, you know, getting vaccinated, so important. Getting booster shots, so important. You know, masking, you know, uh, important. Um, any mitigation measures we can take, we're, we're all just trying to do what we can, especially during this um, very transmissible, I think, as you noted, Councilman Price Abrams, uh, very transmissible strain that's that's uh, really uh, hitting everybody right now. All right. But thank you, Councilwoman, and, and uh, we'll see you, we'll see you, you know, on the screen again soon. I hope so. Thank you. You bet. Uh, Council, yeah. Councilman Russo, I think you're trying, are you trying to say something? You... Yes, yes. I just want to join in with everybody else and, you know, of course, wish my colleague the best to get back on her feet. But um, my concern, as we we did bring into the picture the uh, people who deal with recreational and school issues, I always want us to make sure we don't overlook those businesses. And I know they were consulted, but there were two businesses that wrote articles negatively uh, criticizing us in the past for not doing enough. And I, I think we've done as much as we really can, but I always want us to bring them into the picture. And I, and I wish good luck. I was there just the other day buying some of the most delicious croissants donuts and pastries at the bread company and i i urge everybody to buy the book that was written by uh, the owner so we did that and then we went to see uh, mike guerrero guerrero's um, place up in Caldwell, where he told me that he's going to be reopening by this weekend back in montclair uh, the place that used to be called gelati but we wish the guerreros mike and bray well coming back and opening up again in montclair and um you know, we wish um, the owner of the bread company the best in, in her endeavors. I think that people now seeing that these businesses have struggled and part of it was the mask mandate they were complaining about, but parking is always an issue. But seeing that businesses like that have struggled, I really urge everybody to give them as much support as we can, because that's the key to Montclair is small business people who really, really need our support. So. If we could possibly get out and not just volunteer as as people have been doing at the bread company, but if if you can get out and just you know please uh, give as much support as you can to these businesses that are struggling, that would be a big help during this period. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, thank you. All right, seeing uh, no one else for this one is just uh, all all in favor. Please say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Extensions. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next is resolution R2214, uh, resolution in support of the establishment of the permanent skate park. I so move. 
second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? Seeing uh, Councilman Yacobels. Sorry, I was cropping my hand off. <laughs> um, so just a reminder, because I, I think there are probably some folks in the queue who are going to want to comment and call in. Um, so this you know, resolution does four specific things. One, it triggers an insurance review risk analysis for the Rand Park site for the continued use as a temporary skate park. It directs staff to work with Skate Essex on plans, including assessing possible all possible locations for a permanent skate park and devising a funding structure uh, and making that recommendation to council for a permanent skate park. Uh, upon the favorable insurance and risk assessment for Rand Park would close the two remaining tennis courts there temporarily uh, and allow U.S. Olympian Alexis Sablone, who's also an engineer from MIT, to develop concrete skatable sculptures uh, on the site. So it would allow that construction to take place during the month of March, which would open in the spring. And so then essentially you would have professional concrete skatable sculptures on one side, the amateur equipment that Skate Essex has put together, parents and kids have built on the other. And that space to exist while we do an assessment over where in the town a permanent skate park, including possibly Ram Park, uh, would be constructed. Um, so I think this is very exciting, actually, because, you know, I was doing some, I've, I've been really familiar with what um, Olympian Alexis Sablon has done so far, and this will be only the second place in the world where her uh, skate sculptures appear, the first being Malmo, Sweden. So I think this represents a really incredible opportunity for Montclair to have uh, this type of you know artwork which is also uh, functional in terms of being skatable fixtures uh, it, I think it will help in terms of allowing Skate Essex to uh, fundraise and for both Skate Essex and the township to pursue grants by heightening the awareness of what's happening in Montclair in terms of the skateboarding culture um, and I think that's all really exciting and promising and um I'm just excited about what the, you know the potential is for here, and I'm excited to get to work on figuring out and making a permanent skate park happen in in town. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And I think you highlighted a key piece. I know we're all pretty excited if they can get more and more grants. We're all, we're all for it, right? Um, I know I share everyone's thoughts on that. Um, but yes, any other questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, Councilman uh, Cummings. I think I'd really like some clarity because I'm trying to understand the cost around this, meaning when you say that the sculptures that are being built, the township, are we going to be um, on the hook for some of those costs? No. Um, no. No. Yeah, there's no cost for the. All right, yeah. so we're free there. And then when the GIF does come back, mm -hmm. um, and we get those numbers, it should be very clear that if those numbers are considerable, that we need to, how are we going to determine? I mean, without knowing it, that's the problem I have is not knowing it, but it's not like anything else. We need to be upfront with individuals. That's going to be very important in our ultimate decision. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that we're clear on that. Yeah, I think you're spot on in that, uh, you know, this, this as it moves forward here, this resolution, you know, affirms our commitment, as Councilman Yacobels noted, it kind of spells out those areas and, and uh, uh, with specificity. Um, but absolutely, it is a, you know, we're going to look at this in totality, we're going to be looking at how much money is raised, we're going to look at what the costs are on insurance, we're going to look at, you know, all, all the different factors that you're noting. And everybody's going to, you know, consider that in any final decision. Uh, but this hopefully serves as uh, a resolution as an example that we're committed to it, you know, uh, and, and hopeful that those pieces do come together and work for all of us collectively. And another question I have is the last section. So while this is being constructed, um, are we saying that we are going to secure another space for the skateboarders to use during construction? The skateboarders will continue to be able to use the northern uh, two tennis courts while this, these are being constructed on the southern two tennis courts on the site. It's a three week uh, construction uh, time frame. Right, but the ordinance says it reads at the end that the manager 
basically my half of the township will look into we'll go into memorandum standing with skate essex and then at the end of it it says um basically consideration costs and construction considering costs permitted hours of construction handling waste removal and securing space during construction so if there are ready space for them that's going to be used i don't know why we are saying we have to secure space during construction because they are they already have a location correct yeah, this yeah. is just this is just formalizing the the township um you know working with skate essex to formally secure that space being a two south tennis court brand okay okay so i'm just saying while construction is going on Tim doesn't have to go out and find another location for the skateboarders. Negative. No. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's a positive for me. Um, I think, as I've said to both of you guys, um, I've had discussions with Mr. King um, and all the folks who've called in. I've expressed what my concerns are. So I hope that you know, as as this moves forward, that Michelle and her team are very involved with identifying i personally i don't think that rand is a proper space for a permanent skate park um i think we have other locations in town i also have concern that you know five years ago we approved two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to redo rand park and i could see us five years from now in facing the same situation if this location is not you know up to satisfactory and i think we all well at least i know from mr king as well as michelle that the rand is not big enough for what they want and what they feel is actually necessary for a proper skate park so i just want to make sure that i'm on the record that you know i think listen i support looking at to a location a better location but this location to me does not fit that and i think what we're doing by eliminating two tennis courts we're putting ourselves in a position where if we do move we're going to have to end up spending more money to fix these tennis courts back to being able for tennis courts for tennis play we're going to have to also go out and spend money on fix on the other location which at this time we don't know what those costs are going to be so for me i think we're somewhat going right down the same alley we ended up with with the senior center or this conversation around that. I think we should really consider tempering this and getting as much information, particularly of costs of the, what the future skate park would cost us with a location that can also give us an accurate GIF on that. I mean, I think these are all things that we as counselors should really take into consideration. I understand that, you know, the skate Essex folks are have done a great job in, in pushing this agenda. I respect that because I think the children have shown that they are very much in tuned and interested in doing this. But I just wanna be on the record with this group that we are somewhat agreeing to something without knowing what the ultimate cost was gonna be. And then when those costs come back, we just need to understand we have a lot of other things that we're looking at doing in terms of development that this is something that we need to be prepared to potentially back off or move forward without consideration of what is ultimately going to cost us in terms of our budget. So I just wanted to be on the record of, of stating that to the group, as well as those who are supportive of it out there. Again, I have very good conversations with Mr. King. I think you know some of the things we discussed are possible, but I was also very upfront with them in saying that I'm not for eliminating two tennis courts without us doing a little bit more due diligence of finding a permanent place that can be used. So you all kind of know how I feel. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Uh, Mayor. Yeah, uh, Councilman Russo. Yeah, I just want to say something from the perspective, again, of having served as mayor in 2000 to 2004 and working with a council colleague, uh, then Councilman, Second Ward Councilman Ed Remsen, who then became mayor after me, he was the main advocate of a skate park. And a lot of us didn't even know what it was, what, what skateboarding was. So he brought to light something that I really didn't understand, but I embraced. We just didn't get to do it. 
I left the position and he also served as mayor and couldn't get it done. So two former mayors were not able to get this done 20 years ago. And it's not something that we're going to be defining in detail tonight. It's just a commitment to get this process moving because if we wait, just like you know, you, you brought the, uh, the senior center issue out, uh, Councilman Cummings, the, the problem I have is concepts need to be endorsed and then we need to follow up on them. So we know we all want a senior center and at some point we'll get that, but the skate park has been talked about for 20 years. Councilwoman Schlager has carried on a, a dialogue with all of us during that time. Those of you who are new just a year and a half in um, had not been part of all the former efforts that she made. Um, even Councilwoman Baskerville worked with that. But I, I always wanted to see this done. I just was never able to do it when I had a leadership role that was much larger. And I want to see it done now. I want to see us move forward. Two weeks ago, I said, let's do it then. So I'm totally supportive of moving ahead. I think there's been some changes in the actual resolution. And I think we have to be cautious of costs, of course, and discuss this as we go along, but let's get started. There's that old Chinese proverb that President Kennedy used to, used to quote. He used to say, um, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. So let's take the first step tonight. Thank you, Mayor. And Bob, I appreciate that. And I, I totally agree with you. I just wanna make sure that unlike with the senior center that we're up front right now, that costs are gonna be considered and the ultimate decision. And I think we all would like to get them something and get something that's, you know, represents what they want. I just want to be upfront with the individuals from the beginning. As I said, from the day that we um, were sworn in, I'm all about giving you what you need and being very cautious about what you want. And so in this particular case, there is a need, but I want to make sure that we provide it in a way that, you know, it's something that we can sustain and we're going to afford. Thank you both. So any other questions, concerns, comments? Uh, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Herlock. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I uh, uh, First off, I want to thank my colleagues for postponing this for two weeks so that we did have the opportunity to ask the questions and have the discussions and do the research. Um, again, I want to thank uh, Councilor Yacobellas. We've had several conversations over the last couple of days. I appreciate his insight and the information he provided. I share many of the concerns that Mr. Uh, that Councilor Cummings had just uh, shared with us, uh, which I had uh, mentioned last time we were uh, on on the call and uh, or at the the council meeting. I apologize. And and again, it goes back to losing the two courts that we spent a considerable amount of money on uh, four years ago, as well. And I I understand that you know. There's a lot of emotion in this one. There's a lot of history. I get it. I'm not against a skate park, so don't inundate me with emails and text messages otherwise uh, when we're done here this evening. My concern again, though, is I need to know what the insurance costs are going to be. I know that this is going to be a heavy carry when it comes to insurance, whether it's the GIF or any of the other entities out there that might be able to, uh, to, to insure this for us. We have had several groups come to us. The, the Senior Center has been mentioned, um, the Jazz House, uh, the Jazz Festival uh, as well. Money is very tight right now. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. It's the worst it's ever been since it started in March of 2020. I don't wanna see this train get too far off the station. I understand the urgency for the, uh, to take advantage of the, uh, the sculptures that are, are being considered. And again, I appreciate uh, Councilman uh, Yacobellos had sent me that information. It's very impressive. It's quite an opportunity. I have a concern though of losing the courts, particularly the two courts now. So that's that's where I'm coming from. And again, the cost. Uh, I don't need a, a, a resolution to do something in the future. We'll do it. If it's right, we can do it. But I understand the sense of urgency and that, that many of my colleagues would prefer a resolution. That's fine. I just want to get my position out there again on the record, having looked at this very closely over the last two weeks and speaking with many of my colleagues. And again, I appreciate their time for doing so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I also just wanted to basically commend Councilor Schlager, Councilman Acabellas as the 
people who spent the most time on this and really, you know, take a vision that many of you have re reviewed over many years and Councilman um, Russo just articulated how far back some of this goes. But um, I think what we're doing right now is about feasibility. You know, we're gonna get the insurance assessed. We're gonna do those steps. Take the step. We need to take the step that's before us so that we can actually evaluate what's feasible, what isn't. I think there is huge opportunity and, and as was noted with the excitement that will be garnered with um, the, the sculptures by this Olympian. I mean, there's just, you have to sort of dream a little bit and put checks on it. And I think that we've struck that balance, those who drafted this. And I think, you know, it's a positive thing to move step forward, next steps. And, um, and you know, we'll, we will evaluate uh, the next iteration. So I just wanted to offer or for those thoughts. Thank you. One more question. I'm sorry, Mr. Manager, do you have an idea of how long it would take for us to get a response? I know once this passes, you're going to reach out directly and get it going. Do you have any idea how long it would take before we get a response back of what that GIF is? And then what are the requirements to get a, a accurate number? I don't. Um, I, I do know that the GIF works expeditiously uh, in in performing analyses when requested by member municipalities. I would think that that will be impacted somewhat by the pandemic, um, but I don't know how long it will take. And uh, I also don't know what they'll need to perform their analysis, but we'll put them in touch with, uh, through our risk manager, uh, our engineer, as well as the Skate Essex folks. Yeah, so again, that goes to the point, I hope that they understand if we don't get an answer back, how does that impact this start date that they want to have? I think that's a conversation, Peter, you may want to have with them because this seems contingent on that number possibly. So if it doesn't come back sooner or later, then I think, again, I'm just all about trying to make sure that we're transparent and the group knows where things are and, and that, yes, it'd be awesome if March could be that date, but if things don't come back, it may not. So I just want to let that be said, say that. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? No. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Enthusiastic, yes. Councilor Schlager? Absolutely, yes. Councilor Yacovellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution R2215, which is a resolution authorizing the place to place transfer of an alcoholic beverage. And I so move. Second. Uh, any questions, concerns, comments? Uh, and Madam Clerk, have they satisfied all the pieces for this as needed transfer? Yes, Mayor, they have. Well, thank you very much. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? This is for the old Trumpets location, right? No, this is for 499 Bloomfield Avenue. Okay, this thank you. Where, uh, yeah. There was a social club there last, I believe. It's across right. the street from the Claridge Theater. Right, right, the social club. So they're going to be putting in... Um, the uh, place we have in Asbury Park, which has great spaghetti, it's the uh, Porta. Porta is going in there, right? Okay. It's a big pizza, yes. Gourmet well, it's pizza. A good, it's a good Italian restaurant. We got okay. lines in Asbury. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bye. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Russo. Councillor Schlager? Yes. Councillor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Uh, next is is resolution R2216. Now, now Councilman Schlager, I don't know if I want to break the streak here, but I will offer it to you. Do you, do you want to uh, do this one or not really tonight? Um, no, I will persevere. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Where is invoices right. against the township of Montclair in favor of the following persons? The amounts set opposite their respective names have been received, duly audited, and found correct. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the council of the township of Montclair, the county of Essex, that said invoices be, and they are hereby ordered paid, and that checks be drawn by the finance department to the order of such persons for the amounts respectively and here and after stated on the schedule attached hereto and made a part hereof. This bill list is dated January 18th, year of 2022, for the amount of $963,183.02. And I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? Councilman Yacobels. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I just have a few questions uh, for Mr. Stafford. Um, I, no I noticed uh, page one. We have a bunch of uh, Amazon charges. So I just wonder, and I assume this is the standard practice that we go to Amazon only only if we can't secure these items locally or through existing contracts. Or if they're the best price. Page page six. Um EMA restaurant supply. PO 210 1998 dishwasher for historical society. Just what that is. That's a restaurant quality dishwasher for the health department for its programming at 109 Orange Road. 108, 108 I believe, Orange Road. Thank you. On page 12, uh, both North Jersey Media Group and NJLM have costs associated, associated with job ads. Uh, this is just, I'm assuming, the posting of um some of the open positions that we have correct you uh page 14 regional communication inc uh po2102379 just what that is F fdpm slash fcc is that fire department yes yeah it's an invoice in connection with fire department radio system and so we're what are we doing with the radio system there is that a new or refurbishment I think that was just repairs to the existing system or uh, components thereof. Okay. Uh, page 16, Vericor, PO2102550. It's right there. It just says new vendor. Just what the description of this expense is. That purchase was for the health department for three coolers, as well okay. as carts and a data logging kits to transport vaccines and other me medicines requiring uh, cooling. Thank you. And then last one on page 20, uh, Kurochia Company or Kurokia Company, PO2102249. It just cuts off in the description, install new handicap ramps at M. The handicap ramps were installed at Mount Hebron Road and Valley Road. Uh, they were uh, removed and installed as part of a water department uh, or water bureau uh, project. Okay, got it. So these are the ramps on the corners. Okay. The, the tactile, the red tactile ramps with the truncated domes that you see at the uh, corners of intersections. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions uh, or concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobelis? Yes. Mayor Spiller. Yes. Next is resolution R2217, which is a reorganization of the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, comments? Councilwoman Price Abrams. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to put a little frame on this. Um, as uh, all here know, and many of the members of the public, uh, Councilman um, Cummings and I have undertaken a review of uh, just looking for some continuity among the various, uh, starting here with advisory committees and and um, other of the boards and commissions that are authorized and, and are operating. And so we had uh, taken on a couple other things in the recent past and most recently now before you is this um, modest revamp of the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. And I just want to point out that it primarily, uh, whereas many representatives of the kinds of groups that are identified on here have served and are currently serving, we decided to, you know, identify all of the real key gate um, stakeholders among senior organizations and those who 
are interested in them as well as the buildings that are the townships affordable senior citizen housing um, projects. So we've identified those and we'll be looking for representatives to serve from each of those places. Um, you know, for example, with the mill, um, which is the educational programming, someone who's a participant, someone who's a volunteer. So we're trying to make sure we have all of those kinds of points of view represented in uh, informing the township staff and the council as to how best to move forward in the service of, you know, the needs and interests of our seniors. So that's just a little bit of description about it. And with thanks to my colleague, um, you know, that we've spent some time working on these and we're, we're just getting started. <laughs> And I want to add to uh, Councillor Price Adams that one of the things we did here is we reached out to Ms. Church to bring her into this. And I want to thank her. So she provided some really valuable um, information to us in terms of how we shape this. And I think one of the things Lori and I have um, committed to is doing the same thing with all of these, is talking to staff who literally do the work with these groups and get their input because as, as counselors, we're not as close to this as they are. So they, they really gave some good recommendations. Same thing with Michelle Camarada in terms of the parks and recreation. So I think that's something that um, I was really pleased. And I just want to make sure I publicly thank Ms. Church for her input, as well as Lori for spending the time with us. And Paul and Gina, thank you for the revisions and making sure that we were able to get to this in a short period of time, considering that we really wanted to make sure it got done and got taken care of today. So appreciate that. Well, Thank certainly you. before we, we, we move this to the vote, just want to say on behalf of all of your colleagues, we know we, you know, we appreciate you guys stepping forward to do a lot of this uh, work and analyze this. We wanted to give it the just time it deserved. And, and uh, certainly that means, you know, a uh, laser focus on this specifically. And you guys have dedicated that time. And certainly what you've shared, uh, you know, with with me, with all of us as, as on the council has shown your your diligence in the, in the work that you put forward. So we appreciate that as well. So uh, thank you both. Appreciate it, council colleagues. All right. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Uh, may. Uh, uh, Councilman Russo. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As the oldest member of the council who really relates to the seniors who many of whom serve on this SCAC, we call it Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, I want to thank Councilman Cummings and Councilwoman Price uh, Abrams for working on this. I've, I've talked to uh, seniors about their service and i i want to just praise them you know it's fine to thank everybody else for working on it but here's what has happened over the years they've worked very hard to promote and advise us on senior issues and there's a lot of good people on that committee who would like to continue serving so i think that would be best for us to once we we put this um reaffirmation of a senior citizen advisory committee which by the way started in 1985, when it was proposed by First Ward Councilwoman B.J. Ricker, B.J. Ricker was a First Ward Councilwoman who really served well in, in that time before we even had this form of government. But B.J. Ricker proposed this and put 20 names up to be serving on it. I think there's none of those people are around serving right now. But the people who've been serving for years, I think, uh, should be commended and thanked for their service. We don't always agree with everything they might recommend, might not be always able to do what they would like us to, but we're still here as a community with 7,000 seniors, people over 60 who really need to have a voice. And this committee gives them a voice with us, working through us, working through our staff. That's the key, that they're part of our government advising us, the mayor and council, on what seniors need and what they want us to do and we'll try to always be respectful of their service. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, concerns, comments? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please. Uh, Councilman Yacobels, did you, were you voting or were you? <laughs> just a quick, just a quick sure. comment. Um, I, I also appreciate Councilor Cummings and Councilor Price Abrams and the work you guys are doing on this. I think, you know, this model, um, you know, sort of almost consider it's like a representative model in terms of making sure different um, professional perspectives are represented and making sure different organizations are represented, different institutions are represented. I think this is a really healthy approach to an advisory committee. You know, advisory committees exist to advise the council. Uh, it's for us to ask uh, for that advice. Uh, and that is best, I think, coming through uh, people who are representative of all different 
walks of life and professional experiences to offer that professional advice that we seek when we look to develop policy uh, relative to those areas. And I think this is a model uh, that we should look to deploy across uh, most of, if not all of our advisory committees, frankly. And you know, you'll of course remember we started down this path in terms of looking at our, our parks committee similarly. And so I hope, and I know we'll get to that too. And I'd like to be excited once we do so that we can um, you know, update that along with the rest of these. So thank you for the work there. Yeah, and that's a, and not to have the last word, but I think one of the things that Lori and I found out in looking at the parks and recreation is that there's not many recreation involved in that committee. And so, again, I think the model that we put together is one that we will use across all of these, and it's a pretty arduous task. And I hope people will be very, give us the time to do it so that when we finish the product, it's done right. And that was one of the things that kind of stood out to me. Lori and I, we never even thought about the recreation part in that committee until Michelle brought it up to us. So I appreciate, I commend and thank you for those, but uh, thanks a lot. But Lori, I really do appreciate you um, kind of shepherding us through with the language and also kind of getting it done the way we need to get it done. Thank you. And, and not to steal the last word from you, if I may, Mayor, I do want to remind the public that we will be looking to fill these and other positions and so that we will be refining the volunteer information form to just capture information we might need and just to have people who want to express their interest to serve that they'd be going through that channel and, and we need to, as a township, of course, you know, put that out there in different ways and make sure people are aware. Uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I will try to take the last word on this one. Um, I, I really want to thank my colleagues, though, um, uh, Councillor Cummings and, and Council, uh, Councillor Price Abrams for the work that you put into this. This is something that uh, has been a long time coming. I'm glad we're, we're, we're on that path. Um, I, I echo the set sentiments of my colleague, Councillor Iacobellas, on the advisory committees are here to advise. Uh, that's exactly what they're here for. And we look forward to consulting with them and, you know, seeking their advice when, when we need it, for sure. And I do look forward to y'all looking at the Parks and Rec Committee, because I think that's one that, uh, as you pointed out, Councillor uh, Cummings, that definitely needs to be looked at as well. And I look, at, uh, I look forward to what you come back to us all. And thank you again for your efforts on this front. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You bet, sir. All right, I'm giving a long pause to see who really wants the last word on this, but uh, it might be that deputy mayor. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, all, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. And lastly is is uh, resolution R2218, resolution opposing Senate Bill S2674 uh, and Assembly Bill A1116, which is the regulation of small wireless uh, facility uh, deployment with the state. And again, you'll see as it's worded, you know, and thank you to our attorney for working on this. Appreciate that, Mr. Burr. I know that uh, you gave some time. Uh, just modified to be, because we know that uh, uh, obviously these bills were in the last uh, session. And, and of course, it's really a, a statement opposing in the future sessions as well. So with that, I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, or comments? Councilman Yacobels? Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for uh, working together on this uh, with uh, our law department, Mr. Stafford, et cetera. I think this is an important one. It's one of those things where the public isn't paying attention. You know, it's 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 something that it's a power that gets taken away from us as a local government and really from the people. Um, I don't understand, you know, sometimes, well, I guess I do and don't understand, you know, the, sometimes what can happen in Trenton in terms of a power grab. Um, I think we as a municipality should have a say over the placement and design of 5G infrastructure in our town. And I really want to strongly encourage people uh, in the community to reach out and make sure your state representatives, your assembly members, your senator, and the governor uh, oppose this legislation. Uh, this is, I think, really important to preserve. You know, we only have so much power, our greatest power as a municipal government being land use. We exist for land use. This is about how we're using our land, uh, how we're using municipal 
public right of way uh, for deployment of a major utility. So, and we're seeing the problems, by the way, in terms of uh, air traffic control and the airports um, when it is so centralized. This is something that needs to be pushed out and be much more uh, approached from a local perspective because we understand uh, the nuance of what's happening on the street in our own town and in our own neighborhood. So I just wanted to use this opportunity as a call to action for people in Montclair to make sure that your uh, elected officials at the state level hear from you in terms of opposing this legislation and making sure that we preserve our power as a municipal government to decide the type of infrastructure and placement of infrastructure in the public right away for the deployment of 5G in Montclair. So thank you. And thank you again, Mayor, for collaborating on this. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to, I mean, I remember prior to getting on the council, there was a discussion of a tower going up down in the South End. And that's what got me into looking into this whole 5G. And I believe Robin, Councilman Schlager may have had to go through this one at streets in her area where, you know, aesthetically, what is required, I believe, at this point is just not appealing to a suburban township, number one. I think, two, you know, to Councilman Jacobelis's point, you know, getting out the word, you know, it's already, look, the FCC, they've already said they're not going to put this around airports, which was a big change that the Biden administration brought up. So I think for us, it's kind of hard because we really don't control it. Um, we And as much as it is in our backyards, but I do think people need to be aware of what this will look like because i believe there's there's like a 200 foot separation between poles which is not a lot of space so all of a sudden you know our tree lined streets could, could potentially be like pole written and it's just i just don't get it and so I, I i find myself agreeing with the general councilman uh at large council person and that this is something that i think we need to uh really engage all the public about specifically i know um kind of diane tyree and the naacp education committee started a group of youth who were looking into the um how you know trees are not in urban areas and you know and so i think we should be looking at things like that um to kind of give ourselves an environmental question of what is the impact on this i mean it's great for businesses you see AT&T and Verizon all, you know, pushing this. But at the end of the day, you know, I like my trees on my street and I don't like them to be interrupted by poles every, you know, 20 yards or whatever. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, I think this is something we should definitely put our names behind, but also get the public very, very strongly to start um, putting ourselves to this publicly. Yeah, um, if I could um, say something, you're right, Councilman uh, Cummings, it was Gray Street that was plagued with um, with this issue for many years. And um, AT&T and came down, Verizon came down their street, chopped up their trees, put wires in their trees and poles. Um, and, and I have to say that the, the Gray Street rallied. They um, they did a lot of work on this and and, and, and we were able to, to fight it. But we also, um, there was talk at Nishawang Park at one point as well to put up a a tower, and we, in fact, mm -hmm. Councilman um, Baskerville looked. We looked into a, um, a a fake tree or a bat by the baseball field that looked like a fake bat that would look like an antenna, um, and that luckily never came to fruition. But um, but yes, you're right. Local streets have to be weary. We have to pay attention to this. It's really important. Thanks. And and certainly, I just note and. Uh... You know, this is an issue we've been facing and, and, and certainly please removing this, uh, you know, resolution here. I think it's important, as was noted, that we need to absolutely have voices be heard on this in that I want to be clear, uh, as the councilman just noted, right now the laws are very restrictive on what kind of controls we have, right? This would just further restrict it. So it, it, it's going from a bad situation that we're in now in terms of very limited in our ability to say no to an absolute worst situation where we have just no say at all, right? So um, we're trying to prevent that, but but certainly I would argue, you know, through, through great lobbying efforts, um, you know, don't don't just lobby, my, my humble opinion for the, hey, don't don't make it worse, uh, maybe lobby for make it a little better, right? Give a little more control and say. So um, we we don't have, I know our, our attorneys could speak to this as well, but especially over issues such as this and, and telecommunications, uh, we're very restricted in what we can say no to, you know, we're, we're limited in terms of, 
um, you know, a lot of pieces around it. So um, if we can claw back any more controls there, that would be, I, I think, welcome, certainly welcome by all of us. Um, but uh, it's limited now, and this would make it, you know, drastically more so. So, so just putting that out there as well, um, as we inevitably will face some challenge around this, you know, knowing, you know, even if we're successful here, you know, see, seeing what ways we're limited, it's because already under the law, you know, we have very few, very few options, um, but wanted to note that as well. Uh, Mr. I see three hands, so I'm going to go. I saw him in this order. So I see Mr. Deputy Mayor, and then I have Councilman Price Abrams, and I have uh, Councilman uh, Russo. I saw those three hands go up in that order. So Mr. Deputy Mayor, and then Councilman Price Abrams. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we, we've been looking, we as a council have been looking at this for many years. That, that there was a committee, actually, Councilwoman Schlager, uh, council, uh, former Councilman uh, McMahon, and myself, who had been working on this as well. And usually I don't. Uh, subscribe to resolutions you know lobby the federal government lobby uh trenton what have you but here this is a much much different beast if you will um particularly and, and i think it was councilman Jacobellis who maybe mentioned it this is land use local land use and that is paramount I mean, we have nothing else in our charge as council members it's this issue this particular issue as well, so uh, I, I look forward to uh, working on this issue, and I know the EDC is working on it. The Economic Development Committee, um, with, there's a, already a, a head start on this issue. Happy to share that information with my colleagues going forward. But this is something that I would uh, fully support as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Price Abrams. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I will just note. I hadn't read the legislation and, and the resolution did arrive as, you know, as, as, as the other piece had uh, as late entries to the agenda. So I hadn't really um, devoted a lot of attention to it um, until right before. So I, I respect and I agree with everything that we've talked about it in terms of our autonomy around certain kind of issues, even if that's hampered in certain ways by federal or other kind of laws and regulations. But you know, I, I'm also just mindful, we all walk around with this, you know, we, we all have our phone, we all need, we all want and need the, the greater technology. And so I just want to be mindful of the fact that there's probably not really a good place. <laughs> so I think having some autonomy and control around what we deem to be the least bad place, I just think it's, it's going to be probably a complicated uh, matter. And I would I'm, I'm inviting uh, any of my council colleagues who have studied this in greater detail to, you know, find some time and uh, educate me further around this. I will certainly look over the legislation. Um, as, as we're noting, it's defunct. I mean, it will likely be reintroduced. Perhaps it will be modified. Perhaps we can make for a better bill, a bill which is what uh, you know. I think we're all talking about here. So just invite those conversations with my colleagues going forward before we're really dealing with the issue again. Thank you, uh, Councilman Russo. And then I see your hand again, Councilman Yacobel. So Russo, then Yacobel, uh, Councilman Russo. You're, you're muted, uh, Councilman Russo. Sorry, Mayor, I just want to thank the two women who I met with uh, about two years ago who helped educate me, and I, I referred them to Councilor uh, Baskerville at the time, and also they were talking to, uh, I think, Councilor Price Abrams, and maybe then they got to talk to Councilor Cummings. It was they, they called their group the South End Community Group because they were concerned about those towers, the proposals in the South End, but then they got broader because they were concerned about the impact of the the towers all over. And I just saw on the news before we got on council, you know, the Alaska Airlines president, Ben Minicucci, was talking about this whole thing and the, the impact on the airlines and on the airports, really scary and very concerning. So it goes way beyond just, you know, what this resolution does, but we've got to watch this whole area. Great to have this hookup of 5G, but is it good for our health? Is it good for our children? Is it good for our communities? And certainly there's been a big question which was temporarily resolved by negotiation of the president with the airlines and the airports and Verizon and AT&T agreed to, um, to halt implementation. So just wanted to throw that in and thank those folks who gave me some education on this a couple of years ago. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilman Gagos. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I just wanted to add to uh, to Councilwoman Price Abrams' point. You know, 
I'm the first person to run out and buy the new newest iPhone, right? With 5G and I want that to work. <laughs> so totally uh, get that. And like at the end of the day, this is driven by consumer behavior, um, right? Like if we didn't want 5G in Montclair, then I would say don't buy 5G devices, uh, but we all are. Uh, and that's just a fact of life. Um, but what I remember, because we were developing a, an ordinance for us to be able to affect certain aspects of the deployment of 5G before we got word that the state was looking at taking away this power. And two very specific things that we would have had control over is the design, because there are many different types of boxes that can be added either to light posts or to telephone poles or to electric poles, as well well as the placement of the equipment that goes on the ground to accompany the tower, which is more cumbersome. And that's actually the part, I mean, I'm, I'm equally concerned about both, but it's the placement of the equipment on the ground. You know, if we don't preserve control at the local government level, then we're going to wake up one day and see these boxes, frankly, on curbs, just put wherever the utilities decide to put them throughout the town. Um, so it's less about towers, because this isn't really about new towers going up. It's typically a smaller box about a foot to 24 inches getting added to a, a light post or a telephone pole. I'd like for us to be able to affect the design of that. Um, but it's also the bulky uh, service equipment that accompanies those towers that will be placed around the town that we want to preserve our right to be able to decide where those go. Because we care a lot about the, I think, look and feel of our town uh, and want to make sure that, you know, these things, if they can be placed in more inconspicuous locations, um you know we'd want to preserve that that ability so i just wanted to clarify those couple of things thank you okay thank you okay um seeing no others uh all in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed extensions okay thank you very much we we'll appreciate that as i noted at the start here i know that we had uh a few people on, I, I specifically know for which resolution. I think we wanted to get to that before we jumped into executive session here to discuss a, a, a litigation matter before we come out for some other action. Um, so with that, I so move that we move uh, into executive session to uh, an authorized executive session without public being permitted to attend in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 B subject is litigation and I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Okay, we'll now go into executive session. Thank you very much.
man, we are back online. Awesome. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Fan. Uh, we are now out of executive session, although technically not going in with our technical glitch here. We uh, are unable to go into that and have a dual queue meeting, unfortunately. So, of course, Mr. Fan, appreciate you trying to work with that technology as always and, and steer us through. Uh, we appreciate it. Of course, we, we, of course, learned something that you can't do that. So we will go into public comment. Um, uh, we will go through into we have two actually public hearings on two ordinances and then go into our public comment. Um, and then from from there, we will go into executive session and then hopefully be able to manage the meeting in that way virtually. All right. So thank you. So with that, we have uh, first is ordinance 02127, which is authorizing the execution of a lease renewal agreement between the township of Montclair and the ambulance unit for the property located at 95 Walnut Street. Um, with that, I, I so move and, and uh, uh, Madam Clerk, I'll check that it's been noticed properly for the hearing and everything else. Yes, yes, Mayor, it has been noticed properly. Okay, uh, so moved. I'll second it, Mayor. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any comments from my colleagues? Any objection to opening it to the public? And it is now open for a hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak on uh, Ordinance 02127, uh, please uh, do so now. Hey, our first to speak would be caller with the number starting 973698. It is your turn to comment. 973698. Please, for the record, state your name. Hi. Keep your comments. Hi, my name. And mute your listening device. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, my name's Diane Herbst, and I'm a Montclair resident who plays tennis at the Rand Tennis Courts, which are oftentimes so busy at the times I play that people need to wait to get a court. Myself and other tennis players are extremely disappointed that a resolution voted on tonight with no comment allowed before the vote and no outreach or warning to the tennis community to create a permanent skate park that intends to get rid of all four of the Rand tennis courts that the town paid $256,000 in 2017 to have redone. While I understand the need for a skate park, a skate park does not have to be at the expense of those of us who play tennis and rely on the few remaining beautiful courts at Rand. And there are certainly many tennis players in town who need courts. There were about 2,000 tennis permits issued to players last year. Unlike tennis, skateboarding can be done on any open lot or space, and I encourage the town, like Councilman Cummings mentioned at the last meeting, to find other places such as Erie Park that are suitable for a skate park without taking away tennis courts that taxpayers already paid for. To take away a much needed resource already funded by taxpayer money is not good public policy. I want to correct some inaccuracies brought up in the public discussion about court availability. There are other courts in town, but the reality is we can't use them at many times because they are taken up by clinics and high school practices. Brookdale is a county run facility and during the outdoor tennis season, a private group runs the court. We have to pay a fee to play and they are frequently booked for clinics and private lessons. And for reasons unknown, some council members have repeatedly mentioned private courts and country clubs that charge fees of many thousands of dollars per year as a viable alternative to free tennis courts for Montclair taxpayers. I and many other Montclair residents can not afford to become members of these country clubs. Regarding additional taxpayer costs, the representation that there is no cost to the town is totally misleading. At the January 4th council meeting, Councilman Yacobelis claimed there would be no cost to the town for a permanent skate park. Then in the same meeting, we hear Councilman Yacobelis and others say the town could have to pay one third of the cost. In the Montclair local article of January 12th, it says that only $40,000 has been raised by the skate group to fund the project, but builders estimate the total project cost is $1.5 million to $3 million. So that means that the taxpayers of Montclair, who have already paid over $250,000 to have the tennis courts redone in 2017, could see that money go down the drain and now pay at least another $500,000 to $1 million to create a skate park in the same spot, likely for use by many non Montclair residents. Meanwhile, the town council has told the seniors there's no money for a senior center and has told other groups in town you don't have the money to help them. I don't understand how in the middle of a pandemic you can agree to build a skate park at a possible cost to the town of up to a million dollars, not including the additional insurance. This is not good public policy and it doesn't make sense. Is 
Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I could just for Mr. Deborah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I don't know if this is possible. And I, I appreciate the caller's comments and not directing the statement to them at all. But is there a way, uh, Mr. Stafford, perhaps not, we can't do it technologically. I, I have no way of knowing who, why someone's calling. You knew you knew my my question before I got it out, so I appreciate uh, I appreciate. Right. That. I do appreciate your thought, but I I have no way of knowing. I I only know the first six numbers of their phone number. I I don't know anything other than that. Okay, so that that not the and again, I'm not trying to limit anyone's comment. I totally Sir. respect that. I welcome it, but again, it's just a hearing on the Montclair Ambulance Unit Ordinance. So thank you, Mr. Stafford, for clarifying that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize. I apologize for interrupting. Next would be caller with the number starting 650889. It is your turn to comment 650889. Please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. Okay, this is this was Rick. Um, I'm calling about a couple of comments made earlier um, about the uh, about the Rittenhouse uh, case by our by mayor and the NGAA. Um, the jury found that he acted in self-defense against violent felons. Um, one of them was a child molester. I don't think it was warranted. Uh, two, um, I, again, I think rent control is unfair. It reduces housing availability and it raises rents overall. I think it should be opposed and I think it's a false solution to issues of, of high rent. <laughs> and thirdly, um, I don't, it was wrong, Ms. Bella, to turn the previous town council meeting into a political rally uh, about keeping Montclair blue, which in blue especially has resulted in more crime, including murder, more inflation, more institutionalized racism, including and other forms of bigotry, more foreign policy failures, and more excessive COVID overreactions on our school children. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 973-979. It is your turn to comment. 973-979. Please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. Hi, uh, this is Antonella Toronto. Um, first off, I just want to thank Mayor Spiller, uh, Council Members Schlager, Russo, and Jacobellis. As well of all, as well as all of the uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, uh, you guys' constant support of the park and the skate community here in Montclair has helped us tremendously with this process. Um, just having this temporary space has shown how many skateboarders are in Montclair and how much they want this skate park to happen. When we would organize cleanups for the park, there were always skaters ready to help where they could, uh, whether it was sweeping, shoveling, or even scrubbing the courts. Uh, at our skate events, time and time again, we would see uh, just the massive turnout of new skaters, new faces always coming just to try out this sport and be happy with it. During the pandemic, the skate park acted as a safe space for kids and adults alike. Uh, we saw ability, ability, gender, and race had no say in the amount of fun one could have. Turning this spot into a permanent skate park would not only benefit the young skateboarders currently engaged in outdoor activity, but it would help to grow the sport of skateboarding here in town. Rand Skate Park, uh, Rand Park, as we know, is the best place for it, mostly because of the location. It's right next to two uh, schools, Renaissance Middle School and um, the Montclair High School, and it makes it a perfect location for clubs like the uh, High School Skateboard Club to easily be able to access those courts during club meetings. Um, overall, honestly, I see nothing wrong with the possibility of a new beautiful park coming to Montclair. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 973-632. It is your turn to comment. 973-632, please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. Thank you. This is Irina Goldstein. I'm calling again to express my support for the library. Before I get started, I wish to thank the mayor for reappointing Ms. McCullough to the Board of Trustees and for appointing a new trustee member. Montclair residents are deserving of a well-funded independent library free of government control. As previously stated at council meetings, 
Other similarly situated towns provide their libraries with funds in excess of the statutory minimum. These extra funds translate to more operating hours and greater services. It has now become clear that the township CFO was instructed to delay providing previously budgeted amounts to the library in an effort to coerce the library into agreeing to a library funding agreement that would have stripped much of the library's independence over programming. This type of behavior has to be put firmly in the past and should not be countenanced going forward. The library is at a crossroads. It now needs to find a new director who is willing to step into the quagmire created by the finance committee and the township manager. It is imperative that the game stop and that the town fully support the library to ensure that the library returns to normal operating hours with a staff that feels the support of the Montclair governing body. It is clear that Montclair residents support their library. As a result, the council should act in accordance with those who elected its members. Thank you for listening. Next would be caller with the number starting 973619. It is your turn to comment. 973619, please, for the record, state your name, mute your listening device, and keep your comments to three minutes. Hello, good evening. This is Ahava Felici Dodd, president of the Tenants Organization of Montclair. Happy to be able to be on the call um, tonight uh, to speak with you, mayor and council, and also the public. But mayor and council, I'm just asking that you all approve whatever agreement is reached with the Tenants Organization of Montclair. Um, and the stakeholder landlords, landlords with regards to our rent control ordinance. I would also like to thank you for the rent freeze ordinance and the extensions thereof. I want to highlight one particular caller this evening who was um, just one particular caller who was facing an un unconscionable increase and in called into the tenant organization of Montclair because the house that she lives in was recently sold. Her rent is paid. Um, there's a new owner. And she's been given guidance on how to move forward. In many of the cases that we that we receive and we hear and we're trying to help people with, um, their rents are in excess of twenty twenty two hundred dollars. Um, you you should be hearing from her soon. I also want to make it clear um, to many who are not grasping this that when the people who shop local and buy, order, and eat from local restaurants experience these types of rent increases. It makes it in many cases impossible for them to shop local, buy, order, and eat from your restaurants and to shop in the businesses. It's just not right. Um, more owners just should be in support of this. It's been a challenge for me to understand when others don't get that. It's the source. We need housing. I know clients and customers all throughout town that couldn't keep up with the increases. And you know what I found out? After the fact. Now many in the fact. So many later because of things like embarrassment, embarrassed that you that you could pay 2200 but not 2800 or embarrassed that you could pay 1250 but not 1500 both unconscionable increases. It does not help to build the community. Montclair is a special place. I said what I said on the last council call to make an example for which I'll give more clarity. My public comment on January 4th was basically to remind everyone that I'm human, but our group, but our group is un unstoppable with regards to the rent control movement. People are feeling empowered. They're having more hope. Last year, we began offering meetings day, evening, and night, virtual and in person. We'll continue that pattern this year. All of our dates are already set through June. We value the time commitments of our members, volunteers, leaders, and those in training. I love training. In order for them to continue on the legacy of giving in this community. I can live to be 100, but other people still have to put the work in. I'd like to see more people overall stepping up to see rent control in place for the betterment of our community. Thank you for your support of this. It is very important. It is very needed. And we know more now than ever. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 973747. It is your turn to comment. 973747, please, for the record, state your name. Keep your comments to three minutes. I need your listening device. 973747. Next would be caller with the number starting 718812. It is your turn to comment. 718812, please, for the record, 
State your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. Um, hello, my name is uh, Veda Kuhneman, and I'm 10 years old. I've been skateboarding for a couple of years. I love skateboarding because it's so fun, and there's a nice community, community of people who will often help me or give me tips to improve, and because it has given me a lot of confidence. But there's only so much we can do with the skate park now. If we want to skate in a bowl or on bigger ramps, we have to go to other towns to do that. And my mom can't always drive me, so I don't get as much as I like to. I think that the kids in Montclair deserve a real skate park, too. Also, kids in other sports have places to practice and play. Lots of fields in town, the dome, the ice skating rink, skateboarding is our sport, and we deserve to have a real skate park to practice in, too. Also, it's not a sport that requires spending a lot of money. You really just need a skateboard, so it's available for lots of different people. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 973-934. It is your turn to comment. 973-934. Please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. 973-934. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I have my phone muted. Um, uh, my name is Jordan Galliano. Um, I um, am recently um, a Montclair resident. Um, I have some history, especially on the nonprofit and advocacy side of uh, skate parks. Um, I was recently a resident of Paquonic Township, had a nonprofit there advocating for a skate park in Paquonic Township. Uh, some of the questions and concerns regarding um, insurance, cost, location, everything like that. Um, in my experience, um, since a lot of you have mentioned that Montclair is under the Joint Insurance Fund, um, in conjunction or in comparison to Morris County, obviously this is Essex County, um, the Joint Insurance coverage for a skate park was up to $5 million per individual claim. Um, understandably so, Essex County is different, so the claim could be lower than that, higher than that. Um, the best way to find out is to contact the uh, Joint Insurance Fund office, speak with the representative, and they'll give you the information within that business day. Um, now, when it comes to um, safety concerns, um, what one individual called and said that you can go to, you know, other parking lots and stuff like that to skateboard, um, a lot of people have done that and, you know, getting chased around by police officers and property owners. And that actually incurs more of a liability on the township that if somebody were to get hit by a car or incident involving an individual that is disgruntled with somebody skateboarding on that property, um, it can, you know, incur more liability on the township and even make it harder for the public eye to be interested in the effort of a skate park. Um, another thing when it comes to location, as Antonello um, has said, that the um, there's a few factors that contribute to having a uh, well-done skate park is um, um, close proximity to schools. There are two schools right near Rand Park, so it allows kids after school to come there, gather, exercise, and also, you know, express themselves creatively. You know, skateboarding isn't just skateboarding, but it's also videography, photography, art, music, fashion, all this stuff alike. Um, another thing is if it's in an already established park setting, but you already have a playground right there. So if you have parents that have one child that wants to skateboard and then another child that wants to play on the playground, it's easy for them to do. Um, another location or another benefit to the location is that um, 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 visibility. Is it easily seeable from the road? So if police have to drive by or first responders, if they see any incidents, they can just drive right by, clear eyesight, and make sure that nothing is out of the ordinary. Nobody's, you know, doing any mischief to the property, which rarely ever happens at the skate park. I've been skateboarding my whole life. All the only thing that happens there is good stuff. Um, and um, yeah, just Sir, that's when it comes to inspiring. So please do us the service oh, of concluding your comments. Yep, I think that's just about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 415-418. It is your turn to comment. 415-418, please, for the record, state your name. Keep your comments to three minutes and mute your listening device. 
Hi, uh, my name is Tanya, and I moved here from uh, San Francisco to Montclair. I'm a homeowner, and I have owned properties here uh, in my my primary residence in Montclair, but I've also owned property in in San Francisco. And I can tell you, um, being a landlord in San Francisco with rent control, it, it eliminates all the incentive to want to be a landlord and want to own property and and rent out to people. It it there, there's just a um, real problem with rent control. So um, I think that this is really misguided to have rent control in Montclair. I think that rental units will become uh, less and less because it's disincentivized by rent control. And, you know, somebody called up from the tenants organization to talk about rent increases. We have record high inflation right now, and there's no reason why uh, landlords should not be able to raise their rent to accommodate per um, the record high for year high inflation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 917-922. It is your turn to comment. 917-922, please, for the record. State your name. Hi, um, my name is Carol. I live in Montclair, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, our police. Um, I just was really happy to uh, read that there was a bipartisan bill uh, to bolster police funding that was recently introduced by New Jersey Democrat Congressman uh, Josh uh, Gottheimer. It's called the Invest in Law Enforcement Act. And he states, um, overall, this is about investing in the brave men and women in our department, in their careers, their well-being, and their futures. It sends an important message. We want our police officers to feel supported, especially when they're struggling with the realities of their profession. We want them to know that we have their backs and that they are appreciated for the job that they do. Um, it is so refreshing to see that New Jersey acknowledging the importance of being supportive to our men and women in blue, especially after the big push to defund the police, uh, which has been a failed effort to you know, reimagine law enforcement. In fact, there's a CNN article in November that was entitled, Even Democrats Are Now Admitting Defund the Police Was a Massive Mistake. And then it goes on to explain how crime skyrocketed after the police lost funding and criminals were basically given free reign to wreak havoc on large cities. I hope our town council continues to support our police department and ignore the calls to defund the police by the group Montclair Beyond Policing. I would also like to point out that according to Mayor Spiller, which she's mentioned before, um, we do require additional funding to our police force. Uh, and we just received $300,000 from the federal government to form an anti-hate task force to combat a disturbing trend of hate groups, including white supremacists and neo-Nazis. Apparently in 2016, we had six incidences of these bias reports, and now it has skyrocketed to 18 in 2021. And um, those include uh, finding stickers of uh, um, things that uh, people found offensive. And I would like to offer my services. I'd be very happy to go around town with a scraper and I would scrape off those things for a lot less than $300,000. Um, actually, I would like to see that that money could be used for something more practical for our police force instead of this imaginary problem. But uh, someone would be making a um, significant amount of money off of this. Sadly, not the police force. But uh, anyway, thank you so much. I also wanted to say thank you for bringing up the 5G issue. I uh, would like to not see any of that coming up in our town. Thank you so much. Next would be caller with the number starting 646-441. 646-441, it is your turn to comment. Please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is David Greenbaum. I've been a resident of Montclair since 1966. 
I bought my first skateboard at Merce Sporting Goods around 1977. Um, I'm an avid skateboarder at age 57. Um, I'm also an avid tennis player. I've also been a recent commissioner in the town and care very deeply for the town um, and have great admiration for all the issues you're tackling today. I know that this might not seem as having the gravity of 5G and rent control, but it seems to me very simply that the skateboard park would be a wonderful amenity in this town. In fact, it's one I've dreamt of and, and, and hoped for for decades. So there's no question a skate park is a wonderful addition to the town of Montclair. Skateboarding is a wonderful, productive, healthy, super opportunity for children to really develop the confidence uh, balance, athleticism, et cetera. Um, but at the same time, I'm an avid tennis player. And tennis is a game that requires uh, a set location, uh, a set boundary, a set capacity issue. There's only four players on a court at any given time, assuming it's doubles. Um, my son was a varsity player in Montclair Heights, rising and growing exponentially. Pickleball takes place on tennis courts. So the limited capacity we presently have will be further taxed by more and more young people and seniors playing pickleball. With this all in mind, I'd like to propose and suggest uh, and support um, Mr. Cummings, uh, Mr. Herlock's suggestion that an alternate location makes most sense. There's no reason to give up a, an amenity to create an amenity. There are locations such as Erie Park, which has long been considered a location for Skateboard Park. And I encourage you all to very seriously consider not just the cost of building the Skateboard Park, but the cost already incurred for having built the tennis courts and the cost to the community for losing an amenity that serves many people, young and old alike. I thank you for listening, and I hope that we will have a Skateboard Park not at the expense of our tennis court capacity. Thank you very much. Next will be caller with the number starting 973-707. 973-707, it is your turn to comment. Please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Jamie. I'm a Montclair resident. Um, I am calling in support of the skate park. My daughter has just found so much enjoyment in it through the pandemic, it really helped a lot. We, we know all of the stress that the children have been under and it's really, I think, been amazing. And the community, all the comments that people said about the park I have experienced, the volunteering, the, you know, just the openness. I just really am in major support of it. Um, and I second what everyone else was saying. I'll keep this brief, but I just wanted to show my support. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be call over the number starting 646-220. It is your turn to comment. 646-220, please, for the record, state your name. Keep your comments to three minutes and mute your listening device. Hi there. Um, my name is Holly Shaw. I'm a Montclair resident, a mom of three kids. And I have a son who skateboards, so I'm yet again calling to support the skate park. Um, I actually wanted to read something. I had um, met the mayor of Orange, Dwayne Warren, a few months ago at a fundraiser. And I ended up talking to him about the skate park at the time because my son loves Colgate. And I think another little girl had called in and mentioned that she likes the bowl over there. And it's hard to, for us parents to always drive our kids over there. Um, but I had emailed him. When I and told him that Montclair was considering um, moving forward with a skate park, and I just wanted to read your response, his response, because I thought it was very helpful, and also suggest maybe reaching out to him if you haven't already, um, and maybe the issues he's faced or financing or insurance, and I'm sure he would be more than happy to help. Um, but he said to me, "I'm so pleased that your family has visited and enjoyed the skate park at Colgate. It was young residents like your son." who raised their voices and convinced me that skateboarding is an outlet that is sorely needed in the community. I'm reminded constantly when I meet skateboarders across the county 
that we made a worthy investment. Colgate Park had experienced a period of neglect due to tight budget times for the city, which led to other challenges. We made a conscious effort to improve the park, which improved the neighborhood. I encourage any other municipality to invest in skate park. It provides families ways to get their families energized and moving in non-traditional ways. Montclair has always been forward looking and I am confident that the town will heed your call for this source of family and community enjoyment. Thank you so much again for moving forward and um, we as a family, my son who skates, really appreciate it. Thank you. Next would be caller with a number starting 646245. It is your turn to comment. 646245. Please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. 646245. Next would be caller with the number starting 917714. It is your turn to comment. 917714, please. For the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. I think that skating, oh, sorry, um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, absolutely. It's your turn, go ahead. Okay, um, my name is Rose DeMont and I'm 10 years old, and I think that skating is a very including sport, and every time I go to the skate park, I feel like there could be so much more and I want a bigger skate park because the skate park is one of my favorite parts of Montclair. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And also I go there whenever I can and a bigger skate park would give kids more options to practice and do something they love. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 973477. It is your turn to comment. 973477, please, for the record, state your name, keep your comments to three minutes, and mute your listening device. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, hi, my name is Guthrie Stowinski. I'm a junior at Montclair High School and an officer of the Montclair High School Skate Club. Um, I want to urge your support for making the permanent skate park in Montclair a reality. We are so grateful to have the space at Montclair at Rand Park. Um, it's a really perfect location because having it so near the high school means that it's accessible to students during the day. With the mental health struggles that many students are facing across the country, having the skate park so easily accessible means that kids can go skate and lower their stress during the day. There are already kids who go play basketball and use the workout equipment outside of the school to help relieve stress and having the skate park nearby makes perfect sense. I'm also really hopeful that this space will be further uh, redesigned as a multi use space where teachers can hold classes where there will be a community garden and where there can be concerts and other events. Having the skate park at Rand makes um, makes the area more useful because more people can use it with more than 24 tennis courts in our town alone. There are plenty of spaces. Uh, to play tennis. Overall, this space will get much more use of the skate park rather than two tennis courts. Uh, not to mention having access to both sides of the tennis courts is definitely enough space. Uh, thank you for your time and for everything you've done for our town. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 973699. It is your turn to comment. 973699, please, for the record, state your name. Hello, uh, my name and keep your comments to three minutes. Hello, my name is Ross Berkowitz. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, hello. My name is Ross Berkowitz. I'm also a member of the skate club, an officer of the skate club. I'm a senior at uh, Montclair High School. I love skateboarding. I've been, um, you know, fighting for this park now for a couple years. Um, and I really, you know, First of all, I would like to express appreciation for what we do have. We are very grateful. It's like a great space. It's a community. I was just like, I'm on my way back from there right now. Um, I've met and made so many friends, um, all types of different people. It's like really um, a lot more of a community than maybe I had even expected. And I knew it was going to be one. 
um, it's like a great place where like it feels like a second home to the people who frequent the skate park where I have like another family of skaters and um, it's something that's like really special and it's hard to find anywhere else and um, I think if we make the skate park bigger and better it'll only improve upon like the community that's already being built and um, I'd say not only will like giving us the other two courts um, you know improve the skate park but it will revitalize the space in general we have like plans to make it um, like make the park more appealing to non skaters um, as well it's going to be like a full open it's going to be like a beautiful place with the sculptures and stuff and like I think that the central location in town is crucial like and that's part of what makes it such a great um, community like rallying point and like as a member of the high school I do exactly what Guthrie says I go there between classes I go there right after school I'm on the wrestling team I go there after practice um, and anything to improve the skate park you know obviously I'd like to call it and give my support because it really feels like a, like another home to me and I'd like to communicate to you how great of an environment the skate park is and how like much the people that use the space care about it. Um, that's basically all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be caller with the number starting 908-705. It is your turn to comment. 908-705, please for the record, state your name, mute your listening device, and keep your comments to three minutes. Hi, Hi. is the council accepting comments on matters other than the skate park? Y yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Lily Kui. Um, I'm a resident of Montclair and a member of Montclair Beyond Policing. Um, I'm calling in opposition to the DOJ grant that would award $300,000 to Montclair Police for an anti-hate crimes task force. The mayor and council pledged in 2020 to review Montclair PD's budget in the midst of local and national outcries about policing. Now we know that the proposed 300,000 comes not from the municipal budget, but from the federal government, which does not justify, in my view, further inflating our massive police coffers. President Biden has been promising to find ways to quote, refund the police. And this grant program conveniently does so under cover of combating hate. These kinds of initiatives have existed for decades and there is zero scholarly evidence that hate crime legislation and anti-hate policing have any deterrent effect whatsoever on racist or bigoted violence. What it does is expand the funding and presence of policing and carceral solutions. Whichever stakeholders would be at the table, every penny of this grant would go to police. And all the initiatives listed in the award description center on more community contact with police. There are community organizations that can help to educate about, prevent, intervene in, and heal the effects of bigoted violence. Bystander intervention trainings are widely available and don't require involving police, who in Montclair disproportionately use force on black people and people in mental health crisis. On a personal note, I've been proud to see queer and Asian organizations across the country pushing back on opportunistic attempts to harness people's fears into booster efforts for police. After the killings of Asian massage parlor workers in Atlanta last year, national Asian American groups like CAV and Asian massage worker organizations spoke out explicitly against proposals to send more police into Chinatowns and international districts across the country under the name of hate crime task forces. These organizations have been stressing that safety comes not from yet more funding for police, but from funding programs and services that keep people housed, give them access to health care and mental health care and restorative justice, and empower community members to care for each other in moments of crisis. So I urge the council to reject the DOJ grant. Thank you. 
Next will be comment, a caller with the number starting 646-245. It is your turn to comment. 646-245, please, for the record, state your name. Keep your comments to three minutes and mute your listening device. Six four six two four five. Mayor, that caller not having answered brings us to the end of the queue. And of course, I re remind you that this was the public hearing for or for item number A. However, at this point, uh, we've exhausted the uh, queue of callers. Uh, Mr. Stafford, we've all figured out the technology is is only as good as it is, but it's certainly uh, it's it's helped shepherd us through uh, some difficult times. So those are the limitations, and uh, we appreciate hearing everyone's comments. So thank you very much. With that, um, I move to close the hearing on Ordinance 021-27. Is there objection? Hearing no objection, the 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 hearing on that ordinance is closed. Um, any other council comment? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings. I recuse myself as a representative for the ambulance unit. And that's an abstention. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Yes. Councilor Price Abrams. Yes. Councilor Russo. Yes. Councilor Schlager. Yes. Councilor Jacobellis. Yes. Mayor Spiller. Yes. Next is Ordinance 02201, Ordinance Many Certain Parking Fees and Regulations. I so move. Second. Okay. Any objection to opening hearing? Seeing no objection, the hearing to the public is now open. Uh, Mr. Stafford. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, the hearing is open. However, there remains nobody in the queue. I'm refreshing and I don't see anybody in the queue, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Without objection, I will close the hearing. Seeing no objection, the hearing is closed. Any council comments, concerns? Uh, Councilman Jacobels. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I, I just want the public to know who's ever tracking what I say in, in these meetings. Last time I mentioned, you know, the desire for us to consider free 15 minutes. Uh, but what I would prefer to do uh, is have us discuss this uh, in the Economic Development Committee going forward for having an option like that possibly be applicable to all of our municipal decks, not just the one. I don't think it makes sense to do the one right now and not the others. Um, and to also just continue the conversation around how to, how to incentivize parking in the decks versus at meters on the street. So I know that that's a conversation that we're gonna continue uh, in that committee meeting and as a, as a governing body as a whole. So uh, I'll vote in support of this tonight knowing that and hoping that we can consider a different approach to pricing. You know, I know as you've agreed to already, Mayor, um, going forward, thank you. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with the dynamic pricing that we've uh, and heard from all parking experts for so long that we have to consider. So um, yes, uh, Councilwoman uh, Price Abrams. Yeah, I, I do wanna say that I will also of course lend the support because we have a deck coming um, into the midtown deck is uh nearly complete so we're, we're putting it into the scale with everything else but i do appreciate knowing that the edc is going to be evaluating you know just some strategic policy around parking and and the fees and incentivizing and, and all that was sort of referenced already so i'm just endorsing that notion and ask that where possible i can be brought into those conversations uh as a lot of that certainly downtown space is in the third ward and um yeah, look forward to moving beyond this and then getting into those discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no others, uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings. Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Yes. Councilor Price Abrams. Yes. Councilor Russo. Yes. Councilor Schlager. Yes. Councilor Jacobellis. Yes. Mayor Spiller. Yes. Next is resolution R2112, which is a resolution declaring an emergency and directing that ordinance 02127 take effect immediately. And I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. And uh, I think, uh, and uh, uh, I'll ask either of our township attorneys, this requires a higher threshold vote. Is that correct? 
I believe that's correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right, thank you. Just a note, um, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobelis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Thank you with that. And now, in an effort to minimize exposure to COVID-19 and to maintain social distancing practices, this January 18th council meeting and further meetings until the pandemic is over will only be available to the public remotely. Those who wish to participate now during public comment should dial into 408-418-9388. When asked to enter an access code, please enter 23460688001, then press pound. When asked to enter an attendee number, please press pound. When asked, please state your name and then press pound. The administrator will say when it's the caller's turn to speak. The caller will then have two beeps. At that time, the caller will have an opportunity to share his or her comments. Mr. Stafford, is there anyone who wishes to join in for the official public comment section? Mayor, there is no one in the queue. I believe, I believe that was exhausted before with the uh, public hearing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, and we've, I think I had that happen once before, but I just want to make sure for the record that we've offered the public comments. Okay. All right. With that, I'll close public comment. And now with that, I'll entertain a motion to move into executive session. This is authorizing the executive session without the public being permitted in accordance to, with NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 B. The subject is litigation. And I so move. Second. So move and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we are in executive session, Mr. Stafford, Mr. Fan. Um, we'll need, we'll need two know. minutes for uh, TV thirty four to exit. Sorry. Okay, Mr. Mayor, can we come back at nine thirty? Yep, let's 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 take a, a moment break, grab a cup of coffee, whatever else everyone needs to do, and uh, see everyone in uh, in five minutes. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, sir.
and such. Um, so moved and seconded. Any other questions, concerns, comments? I want to thank the legal department, Mr. Mayor, for their work on this important issue. It's a, a national issue, and uh, thank you all for your work on this. Appreciate it. Yes. This is the acceptance of funds. Do we need a roll call vote on this? Or, or not? Uh, attorney? I would suggest you do a roll call. Okay. Um, Madam, Madam Clerk? Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes, knowing this is such a national crisis, we sometimes think we don't have the impact, but we do in Montclair even. Thank you. Um, yes. Thank you. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobelis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next, I'd like to move resolution authorizing the township to enter into a settle agreement uh, of a contract dispute with standard uh, pipe services and, and authorize the payment of sixty thousand uh, dollars as as part of that, and I so move. Second, moved and seconded. Uh, any questions, concerns, or comments on this one? Mayor, just want to thank the law department again for their work on this matter. Same, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings. Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Yes. Councilor Price Abrams. Yes. Councilor Russo. Yes. Thank you to our new team, Paul. Burr and Gina DeVita. Yes. Councillor Schlager. Yes. Councillor Yacobelis. Yes. Mayor Spiller. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, and again, we thank the legal department for that as well. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Um, Township Manager, any uh, kind of comments? I have nothing further this evening, Mayor. Thank you, though. Mr. Deputy Manager. Uh, nothing, Mayor. Madam Clerk. I have no report. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Township Attorney. Mr. Burr, that's you. I'm Eddie. sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's, I'm not used to that being called that. Um, no, Mr. Mayor, nothing further. Madam Assistant, Madam Assistant Township Attorney, anything? Nothing. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, uh, and let's go around the horn. Let's start with uh, Councilman. Uh, uh, Councilman Schlager. Anything tonight? Oh, yeah, one second. Yeah. Oh, sure. oh, I just want to um, say that um, yesterday in memory of Betty White, it was um, a day to um, donate and to pay homage to your um, local animal shelter. So I ha happily made a, a donation through um, the Friends of the Montclair Animal Shelter for our shelter. Although it was a, a small donation, I hope it was one of many that people made yesterday, yesterday in memory of Betty White. And just to remind people that you can always make a donation to the animal shelter, especially this time of year when um, it's cold and the animals need extra care and extra special attention. I also wanted to uh, relay to Mr. Um, Stafford and Mr. Scandalberry, the, what a good job the um, public works did. And we had two small snowstorms, kind of, you know, a few inches, but none in the, nonetheless, they were um, snow. And they and everybody did a really great job. And I want to extend those thank yous to the, to the public works department, to Mr. Bianco and Mr. Wood and their employees. And I think we're gonna get some more snow coming in the next week or so. So I'm sure they'll do an equally good job. And um, and I also want to say um, yesterday being at Martin Luther King Day, um, you know, being home, I was able to watch television a lot yesterday. So, so many nice specials on Dr. King, and it was especially heartwarming to see them on television. And and I know that many, um, we had some some local uh, acknowledgements as well for him, for him, but, um, it was really something to see stuff on CNN and MSNBC. It was it was beautiful. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman. And just picking up on some of the things that you noted there, I'll just say, Mr. Stafford uh, certainly heard lots of accolades throughout the town um, around the snow removal. So, you know, please pass that along as the councilman uh, has noted, and certainly my colleagues, some of the policy decisions that we have 
uh, not only some redundancies, but some other entities in place to help with that work, um, I think has allowed for that to be um, that work to be expedited. So good policy decisions there as well, uh, helping with that uh, process and, and giving our crews the ability to do their job uh, very well. So uh, well well done all around. And, and Mr. Stafford, if you can convey that to the, to the crews, uh, it's appreciated. I want to know that. Note that. Um, next, let's go to <clears throat> uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I also wanted to um, just note that uh, MLK Day is is a day that I, I personally like to find a way to, uh, we call it a day on, you know, a day of service. And there were fewer opportunities. I did try and galvanize what I could to share with, uh, with members of the community and others. But um, I did take part instead in, um, as I, as I, also like to do um, the interfaith service that was held and I was just looking for the name of the mosque so I, I Union Baptist Church hosted it this year um, congregation Shomer Amuna was uh, a Jewish faith partner and there was a masjid and I apologize that I don't right now remember the name of that mosque but um, you know they were just thoughtful comments from everybody who participated there was brilliant and music like moving musical um, offerings that were of of really essential sorts of civil rights era songs that have sustained people over time to um, to just stay the course and uh, and you know in different ways and in in some of the same old ways you know some of the issues just never go away but I think the resilience of a community is in part shaped by um, people coming together and sharing in that common kind of set of values. And so I, I do really love to take part in it and I got a lot out of it. And I know others, of course, uh, many people were on there as well, it was a, a virtual. Um, apart from that, you know, we know that today Governor Murphy was inaugurated for his second term. And while a lot of, uh, you know, he, he noted, I think some high percentage of what he had hoped to accomplish in his first term was accomplished. I know there's always uh, more work to do and, and um, you know, fulfilling on values important to this town and to people who live here and throughout the state. I know we'll all continue working um, on many of those kinds of issues and wish him well and the new legislature that was sworn in uh, last week one day. Um, so it's just, it's a time of new opportunity, promise, hope. We are, we, this body are coming on actually almost the halfway point of our term, which seems kind of amazing that we're still working in, a, in these ways from our little boxes at home. and. You know, we're looking forward to hopefully moving through if there could be a precipitous fall in the COVID numbers. If Omicron, in fact, does kind of crash, uh, that would be obviously a huge blessing that we would begin to find new ways of normalcy. So with Joe's wishes uh, for the kind of the beginning of the, the new year, even though this is our second meeting, I just uh, offer that. And I do also want to, as has been called out a few times, our two attorneys have stepped up into so many things. And I know I had some of those things on your plate, both of you um, appreciate your receptiveness. And obviously you've done tons more that <laughs> I didn't touch at all. So again, thank you for both stepping up in uh, the ways you have. And and uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilman Cummings. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. A uh, couple of things. One, I want to Say good luck to the new board member, Mr. Monk, uh, who was appointed by the BOE. Wish him well as he takes on a task that I know too well. And so we just make sure we give him support. I think it was really good that he stepped up. I also want to thank uh, Fred, Rick, for um, the MLK production he, crea he created for the MLK Day Breakfast yesterday. Um, Mr. Mayor, your words were very appropriate. And um, I just think it was great that he was able to pull that off. And uh, again, Congratulations for Stanley White for pivoting to such a great event. Of course, you know, one of the missing links is, of course, Dr. Davis used to always MC that event. So it was a little somber not having him there. Um, but uh, Robin, appreciate you bringing up MLK Day as well as you, Lori. Uh, for me personally, when I think of that day or I think of MLK, it, it brings me back to my college days in which I actually worked for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference that um, Dr. King started. And so when when and when I talk about Dr. King, I was in the room with Ralph Abernathy, Joseph Lowry, and Hosea Williams during my college years. And when you're in the room with those individuals and you see them as people, it's a little different um, experience, but it's also one that stays with you. And it's one of the reasons that led to my public service my entire life after college. Um, so 
you know, Dr. King did a lot, but those were the folks who were walking with him side by side and giving him guidance. And, you know, so just to have the opportunity that I had to be a part of discussions with them as they continued the work of the SELC in the eighties um, was just, you know, now that I look back on it, it's a very, it's a tremendous honor. So um, again, I think it's a day that we all should cherish and live up to, you know, the responsibility of being better men, better women, and better people. Um, so that I will end it tonight. But again, you know, happy birthday to Dr. King and uh, good luck to everyone as we try to live up to his standard of making sure that the dream comes true. Thank you, Councilman. And, and, and certainly I think, you know, very fitting when you talk about the inspiration and the impact um, that your experience had on you and, and to your life of dedicated service. I think it's nice that it comes full circle when, you, as you noted, we have this scholarship breakfast and and the number of young young students, uh, young adults who are also being shaped by the legacy of Dr. King. I think that's the that's the real uh, testament to the to the work, to the effort, and, and certainly the struggle that continues. But uh, you know, certainly the the lasting impact. And we talk about uh, a, a day of service, a, a time for reflection, and, and certainly a moment for inspiration for our next generation. Um, you know, we we all know that at some point those. Those future students, those future leaders, will be on you know Zooms like this or or in person, and uh, be the future leaders because of the inspiration and the work of of Dr. King. So, um, thank you, sir, um, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just real real short. I just want to echo uh, and thank uh, Mr. Stafford, Mr. Scandalberry, your team, Mr. Wood, the TCS did an outstanding job with the snowfall and ice. That we've been experiencing the last couple of weeks. Thank, uh, please thank everyone who uh, who worked around the clock to make sure that our roads and sidewalks were safe. Uh, echo uh, the sentiments uh, for Martin Luther King Day, uh, hoping next year that we'll be able to attend the breakfast that many of us have been attending for the last ten or fifteen years since we started to serve uh, and everybody get together in one place. And uh, that's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, Councilman Russo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was just getting a nice message from Rachel Wyman, who owns the bread, uh, you know, the bread uh, company, who appreciated the uh, the plug I gave her for her nice. She's got the greatest items, and there's a good book she wrote about donuts. So I encourage everybody again to go to the, the bread company. Um, Rachel Wyman thanking us for our support in uh, keeping her going. Um, I also got a nice message from former Mayor Ed Remsen because I've been in contact with him frequently lately, working together with him on skate park issues that he and I fought for 20 years ago. Now, on Dr. King, I just had this to say tonight. It's very important that I say this because what happened was um, Larry Ham and I go back to living in Newark together. Larry's much younger than me. I know he'll enjoy that, but Larry and I are really from the same, you know, city that we grew up in in Newark. And he was the first, he was the first student they put on the Newark Board of Education. He was the youngest person. He was the first student they had appointed. So way back in his younger days in high school, Larry became a Board of Ed member through appointment in the Newark schools. And Larry just recently spoke with Union Baptist Church. Um, commemoration of Dr. King, but he also wrote a terrific article, which I'm referring everybody to. It's on the New Jersey Monitor, and it's a, a three-page article going through the whole history of Dr. King's fight for justice, but more so for economic justice in his later years. So before he was killed again, we all know that he was down in Memphis, Tennessee, fighting for the Sanitation Workers Union he insisted on going and marching with them for them to have a contract, a union to set some safety protection. Larry pointed out in his speech about this and in his article that Dr. King felt that people had a right to have unions to be organized to fight for their, their own safety. You know, this goes back to the Consumers League of New Jersey, which I'm still president of, and that group started in 2000. I mean, in, in 1900, so in 2000, we celebrated 100 years when I was leading that group, and the Consumers League was always fighting for women and children to be protected in these factories where they were being basically 
exposed to danger. I don't know if you all remember the Radium Girls uh, movie and, and story because those women who were being used to do the uh, Radium dial company work, right? right in Orange next door to us, that caused pollution here in Montclair where we had to go through many, many years to remediate pollution. But those poor women all died from poisoning in using that um, product to make radium dials and to make products that would glow. Well, this exploitation of workers is a terrible thing. And that's why I'm still a union leader with AFT and I was a union leader with CWA. And I'd just like people to understand that Dr. King's last struggle, his last appearance, his last speech was to the sanitation workers in Memphis, Tennessee, who were just trying to get safety in their work, decent contract. The same thing the mine workers went through in uh, the U, uh, it was the United Mine Workers, UMW, formed way back in the early 1900s for the coal miners in West Virginia. And I just hope that, you know, people remember this, that these, these things were done because workers were being threatened with health and, and their own safety. And so they had to have a voice, united voice as union members, just as today teachers and, and other workers, you know, the United Auto Workers was formed in the 1920s and 30s, the Ruther brothers, they had to form that union because they were being forced to make accelerated um, assembly lines, which were dangerous. So they stopped everything. You may have seen that movie, Norma Ray. I'm sure you've all seen it. You know, the movie Norma Ray with her father and where she stopped the mills, the machinery from working. I mean, these are all true historical things that happened. And Dr. King's struggle at the very end was for union and workers and, and safety in the sanitation department in Memphis, just like others struggled for the mine workers, for the auto workers. And I just want people to understand that. That's a message I'd like to bring as, as my own life has been tied up with the AFT and the CWA. And I think that one time when I was mayor, people got mad because I said to our workers in Montclair, there were a lot of workers who were not unionized. I said, well, you should form a union. And they formed a CWA unit. They have a local unit here at Montclair. and We negotiate with them and their contract is something that's binding and gives them a protection. And I advocated it. Of course, I lost the next election. But I think that that's the right of workers to have union representation. So that's my message tonight in memory of Dr. King and thanking Larry Hamm for bringing that to all of our attention in an article he just wrote for the New Jersey Monitor, which I highly recommend everybody see. And if you get a chance to hear Larry's speech on uh, yesterday at the um, Union Baptist Church, I think it was Sunday, uh, a fantastic speech by Larry Hamm of Montclair. Thank you, Mayor. Just one correction, Counselor. Dr. King's last speech was the mountaintop speech. Yeah, it was, it was done at the uh, at the location where the strikers yeah. were the strikers were meeting. Was, yes, you're right, Brian. Speech. Thank you. Yeah. All right, um, Councilman Yakovels. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I, I know a lot of things have already been said, so I won't repeat. Um, but I was just say, you know, my own. I have a, a great appreciation for American history, and particularly, I find it fascinating how we used to have heroes, and we used to have unifying figures that we would rally around as a country. And I consider Dr. King one of several of those. And I was in Washington last month in December and uh, went to the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, I always like to go there and then stand in Dr. King's footsteps uh, where he gave the I Have a Dream speech. And then now you can wander over to the new monument to him, which is in between the Lincoln Memorial and my favorite memorial in DC, which is the FDR Memorial. So just a reminder of, you know, this country used to have heroes who would have big visions that we would all rally around. Um, so yesterday to Councilor Schlager's point and all of yours was a, a great day in terms of reflection. Um, and I know, and you know, we've all, we're all in receipt of this open letter from the African-American Clergy Association uh, and they've expressed their disappointment in us uh, over the handling of the comments by Mr. Karasik. And, you know, that saddens me um, because I think, you know, if we could take the time or if we had the opportunity to explain the predicament that we were in, you know, we were in a situation where 
we would typically go to our attorney to get guidance on how to handle an investigation, how to handle commenting around the investigation, but it was the attorney who was under investigation. Um, so we were in a quite the jam. Um, and it's unfortunate that things turned out the way they did. And, you know, I, I can only speak for myself, but I certainly apologize in terms of how this government was represented um, publicly. And, you know, but, but we were in a predicament and it was a really unfortunate predicament where we were dealing with highly sensitive confidential information and we didn't have any counsel to work with to advise us on what we could say or couldn't say publicly. And frankly, there's real risk when you do that and when you're dealing with these sensitive matters of being sued um, or at least having to be deposed. And all of us, you know, we all make $10,000 a year doing this. <laughs> None of us have a whole lot of extra money to pay for our own attorneys and handle some of that stuff. So it's it's quite the quagmire. So I just hope the community uh, understands that I think all of us on this council had only the best intentions. We all wanted to understand the situation, what happened. Um, and I don't think any of us think for a moment that what was said was okay or excuse it. I think we're all just you know limited by our roles and the law and personnel matters. Uh, and that's the situation. Um, to pivot, my background <laughs> tonight is Love Our Montclair, which was our campaign around supporting small businesses in the beginning of the pandemic. So here we are again with another surge where businesses are suffering, mostly because employees aren't able to go to work because people are sick. Um, people are also afraid to go to restaurants and shops like they were because the Omicron variant has been spreading like wildfire. Um, so I just want to encourage folks again to order takeout, you know, order from your stores online. Um, and just remember these businesses. Remember that if you, you know, use them and frequent them before the pandemic and you want them to be there after the pandemic, they need your support during the pandemic. Um, and to businesses to make sure you go to lovearmontclair.com to register your business as well so that you are on that township uh, directory. And lastly, uh, just in relation to the school board stuff, I just read Montclair Local that we have nine candidates running for school board, which I think is incredible. It's an incredible testament to our local democracy here. And I want to flag uh, an event on February 17th. The League of Women Voters will be hosting a forum so the public can get to know these candidates. That's exciting. And thank goodness we have institutions like Montclair Local and the League of Women Voters to help us participate in the democratic process. And lastly, I want to mention I'm having a forum on the 26th of January to review the Montclair municipal budget, so our government structure, and to review our, our budget, looking at the most recent user-friendly public budget uh, and breaking that down and explaining how that works uh, to the community, bringing in a team of professionals who have helped me put together, spending about 40 hours so far putting together what I think is an incredible presentation to um, make it even more user-friendly and digestible for the public at large. And so again, that'll be on the 26th. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, it, I will just say, um, closing it out, I think that's, that's, that's uh, uh, gone around. I want to thank all my colleagues. You know, when we talk about, um, you know, Dr. King, I know, you know, I know we talked about uh, the, the legacy. I mentioned it with uh, Councilman Cummings. But I just want to, you know, really just drive home the point of I think it's so obvious to to so many of us, specifically who are sitting here in these positions. You know, we would not be here if it wasn't for his efforts and the efforts of so many others. Um, and that is just a very powerful thing to to really take in. And that that is just not that not that long ago, you know. And uh, you know, life life is very different because of the sacrifices that so many have done, um, uh, so many have made. So I just just really want to emphasize that it's certainly something I reflect on often. Um, with that, uh, you know, certainly I will, I will also note, uh, Councilman Yacobelis, as you, as you brought up, uh, and I know all of my colleagues share this, we, we've all uh, separately and apart in, in other settings, you know, spoken of the frustration you know, with the situation with our previous you know, uh, township attorney and the restrictions that we do have. I think you aptly noted um, some of the challenges that we face and, of course, have received legal counsel on what is what are personnel matters, what can be shared and, and you know, for, for, for better or worse, whatever we want to describe. And I'll, I'll be careful in my wording there. Um, you know, we're not we are not permitted to release personnel information, including reports, et cetera. So that, that's a challenge. The process oftentimes is very frustrating. Uh, but certainly, as you note, uh, you know, made every best effort to, to move forward expeditiously without without counsel to, to rely on and, and to try and, uh, you know, get external guidance on that. But uh, but certainly we, we see the 
the the results certainly speak to to our our commitment. But at the end of the day, process wise, we would have loved to have been able to have uh, more flexibility and more ability to to be out there and note those things um, right from the beginning. I know, like so many of you, um, I condemned, we condemned uh, the remarks that were made. Um, certainly, it's it, it's it's not reflective of us as a township at all. Um, and and I think we note that and continue to note that 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 is not who we are. That is not what we're about. And and we. Um, we would we will not tolerate uh, you know action statements such as that, um, and and we'll work to address it you know expeditiously. So um, it, it is certainly unfortunate. Um, he certainly in, in that capacity did not speak for us as a township, and and we would never um, condone or tolerate. So uh, for 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 all of those who had to experience that, you know, I know we are all very sorry to hear that and uh, know that 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 was expressed by him, but. Um, you know, we, we, we work to move forward and make sure our commitment to the values, you know, stands. So um, with that, I just, just want to say also, as we continue into the new year here, uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams, as you know, um, ne never uh, can be overstressed. You know, we're still in the situation of a, of a global pandemic that has such impact on us. And, and here we are, as you note, how, how much later, you know, still on Zooms and still figuring, still figuring out technology like tonight, you know, what we can and can't do. Um, but, um, you know, I, I know that even in these difficult times, I say uh, often I, I am very impressed. I, I, <laughs> easier to say, but I'm impressed when I look at all of you and the work uh, we've been able to do in terms of really moving forward in just some difficult times um, and, and to be able to kind of, you know, work with with our differences and push and pull and make things stronger um, at a time when, you know, it, it could not be harder. It could not be harder to. Uh, to, to be leaders in a time like this. And, and I think each and every one of you, all of us collectively, um, trying to put forward the best we can as residents in this township, as people raising family, raised family, you know, you know, committed to um, the, the, the greatness of this community. Um, I, I know the work you put in, and certainly I know the challenges we face. So I want to thank you for those efforts as we, as we continue through this and hopefully uh, get through this sooner than later and, and emerge as an even stronger uh, community uh, because of our, our work together. So with that, I want to thank everybody. And I know that the, the moment everyone has been waiting for, I move a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so second. I uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, you seem pretty quick on that one, but uh, yeah, uh, just I, a little bit. <laughs> right, Sorry, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah, we have a motion to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thanks very much, everybody. Have a good night. Thank Bye -bye. you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you all. Bye.